The Divine Walk. The Divine Broadcast again, guys. Today's topic we're going to talk about generational curse and how to break generational curse. Before we begin, we are going to pray. So let us pray. I know many people are exposed to living with bondage of sin, give it to them by their forefather. This can continue on for generations until repentance is sourced. So I'm going to pray. And if this prayer helps, if you want this prayer, just tell me. Let us start. Oh, mighty God, it is for freedom for Christ came. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I stand firm in this verse and I pray that every generational curse in my alkaline has no power over me. I pray that every curse spoken and written or transformed to me is broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. Poverty, sickness, and family idol are not my portion. I choose to walk in the freedom that Christ brought for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come to humble before you as well, Lord, to confess the sin of my forefather and I have committed against you. We have not repented Mighty God, we are not to obey your word. As, as a result, we have opened door to reinforce generational curse into our family. Lord, please forgive us of all sin, mighty God. Let us pledge the blood of Jesus Christ upon our life, mighty God. Jesus, purify us from every sin that has been passed on from generation to generation, mighty God. We break them in the name of Jesus Christ and we shall set free, mighty God. Hallelujah. And also, dear Lord, we thank you for the infinite blessing that's upon us. Your word say that you have adopted us in your family and therefore I am an Abraham ascendant and together with Jesus Christ from today and no one, mighty God. I refuse to walk in the curse of my family and choose to walk in the blessing of Abraham, mighty God. I break free from every curse that is passed on, that is spoken over my family, my friends, and even stranger. We cannot, mighty God, let the power of this predict over our life, mighty God. We declare and declare by the blood of Jesus Christ Every chain of generational curse shall be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. I am a blessing to our loved one, our family, and therefore the works of the hands of God is blessing us when we go in and blessing us when we go out. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Today, we're going to talk about generational curse and as an overview. So do you have anyone in your family, including a past generation? have a pattern of constant failure, have a history of untimely death and suicide are a large number of people who have died prematurely, exhibited of high level of anger, have a high record of accident or accident that are usual by our nature, and have a history of abuse such as physical, emotional, sexual, have a history of chronic illness repeated and long-term health problem, etc. Have a history of mental illness that have been progressed through generation, extra bit any deeds of personal behavior, high control, manipulation, addiction, codependency, depression, unforgiveness, and social isolation. Let me tell you, generational curves are passed down like generational trauma. The circumstances of these behavior and threats are passed on from generation to generation until someone breaks the cycle. People, many people are started to realize that if their mission to break the chain of generational curse in their family, a generational curse is dysfunctional or difficult pattern that family have. The generational curse will continue to travel down the bloodline from generation to generation until someone can recognize, break, and heal it. And the personal parents, not himself, are cause of the a sign of him or her, but the person get punished for the wrong of the parents as well. Such, and this is called generational curse. 
So because a child is a product of both his or her peer, generational curse can come from both parents. And this can be in the case if each parent has a sin that merits a generational punishment. So the generational curse can basically be called generational punishment is the source of generational curse. So generally, curse are not a result of familiar spirit. Some uh, fellow believer preach that familiar spirit are a source of generational curse. But I think familiar spirit are discussing and um, like how this uh, associated familiar spirit came up among like deliverance ministry in very, you know, this is because in regard of generational curse, it is God who said that who visit each generation under his curse at the Exodus 20 verse 5. In it, Exodus 20 verse 5, he said that you shall not bow down to them either or worship them for I, the Lord your God, I'm a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the, the father to the third and fourth generation to those who hate me. And that is coming from Exodus 20 verse 5. He said that this is the second commandment which is idolatry. You know, idolatry is a general curse. And he did not say that he will assign evil spirit from Satan to do work. The idea of evil spirit bring, bringing generational curse is therefore the way half the scripture, but God is therefore the, the, some source of generational curse. The reason why I said that, I'm going to tell you the story. No matter which preacher you hear from saying that evil spirit bring generational curse, that he or she speaking, excuse me, you know, if generational issue, genetic, have a bearing, a role in our life, it does not mean that they control our life, our destiny. It is God who control our life and destiny. And you know, um, he will assert in generational characters, good or bad, to be part of our makeup. He then used the mix of these generational characters, good and bad, to work, to do our good and not to work against us. But secondly, the most important cover as particular genetic has been illustrated. That genetic, that is generational characteristics, are not a product of Satan, but the negative aspect are a product of our fallen nature that was corrupted from Adam and Eve sinned. God placed this corruption, our fallen nature, and us after the fall are, are from our original sin. Satan only influenced us to fall into a corrupted trap, and he did not place the fallen nature on us, neither are they generational spirit working behind the scene of in their us, you know? You know, this corruption of our fallen nature take the form of all kind of undesirable characteristics, physical, mentally, socially, and in a different way among different people, none of us is perfect physically, mentally, or socially. No matter the family we may come from, the good characters represent our godly side, where the undesirable characters represent the fallen nature. Sickness, bad personality trend, represent our fallen nature. At some point in our life, if we live long enough, we get old, weaker, less attractive, less smart. Do we start fighting Satan as the angelic character begin to set in? Okay, let me say something as well. I, the Lord, their God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the father and the children to the third and the fourth generation to those who hate me. But what they miss are usually two things. This was written to Israel, who God brought out of Egyptian slavery. So the Lord said to Moses, thus you shall say to the people of Israel, we must look to the content the idea as to who this was written another point is god visit the iniquity um of the father and the children to the third and fourth generation to those who hate me that is exodus 20 verse 5 so god is visiting each generation for their own iniquity which are all those who hate god but these people don't sound like believer to me because christian are not god haters they love god although god loved them first and we can feel they are under generational curse in what the Bible says because it said the son shall not suffer for the iniquity of the father, nor the father suffer the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. Ezekiel 18, verse 20. So each generation is responsible for their own wickedness, just as each individual is on the day of judgment. So the story of generational curse, uh, which is in the Bible. So we 
are to be dead to sin. Romans 7, 4, 4. Dead to sin means our sins no longer love the sin, which to live in sin, to condone the sin. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God seed remain in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. First John 3, verse 9. We know that we all come short of the glory of God, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. is teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion to live a self-controlled, upright, and godly life in the, the present age. That is coming from Titus 2, verse 11 to 12. So each of us has a era of wickedness where we'll be fall far much easier than others who is strong in this era. Some here are like, some um here that people can be um weakness in our weak in number one it can say in dealing with sexual desire example like Psalms David and Solomon um two a easy money influence Judas that's going from Matthew twenty six verse fifteen to sixteen third craving for alcohol lot Genesis nineteen verse thirty to thirty eight heartless personality or lack of empathy for the needy. Yeah, this is an example of the rich man who had no empathy for Lazarus. Luke 16, verse 19 to 31. But there are some localized verse we read about in the Old Testament. After Cain murdered his brother, God cursed Cain to become restless, wandering. Noah cursed the Cainian because of this well, lordness of this father, Ham, Noah's son. And, and in what apparently a generational curse? Also in Judges and King, it wasn't uncommon for people to curse at each other, but Judge 19 verse 27, Judge 17 verse 2, 1 Samuel 14 verse 24. So when a gang of you would threaten Elisha, he called them a curse after which two beer came and then dead, you know? Some of the Psalms, you know, calling for curse for their oppressor. And Another thing as well, one of the most interesting prayers in the Old Testament is the generational curse that never actually happened. Balaam was hired to curse Israel, but when God intervened, he ended up blessing them instead. We also find curse that talk about in the law of Moses. According to the law, anyone who cursed mother or father was to be put to death. Exodus 21 verse 17. And as was anyone who cursed God. Leviticus 24, you know, verse 15. There's another story that uh, captured my heart as well. There is much for you and me to learn from the life of Ahab. The life of Ahab is a study in evil and it's a law awful consequences as well. So first King 21 detail Ahab life in a graphic term. So first he sold himself to do evil by marrying Jezebel that was throwing over the terrace. And second, he did more evil than any man before. Third, he behaved in the vilest manner. Fourth, he led the whole nation to sin against God. And yet a merciful God that gave him another chance when he repented. So First Kings 21 verse 28 said that, And the word of the Lord came to Elijah, the Tishbite, saying, See how Ahab was humbling himself before me because he has humbled himself before me. I will not bring the calamity in his days, but in the day of this son, I will bring, bring the calamity on his house. Yes, Ahab's son, oh my word, Ahab's son has done so much evil in, in his days. Joham. So Joham died in the field of Neboth, but God postponed punishment of the time of Ahab's son because Ahab truly repented, but the son was very evil as well. So he was probably greatly influenced by his wicked mother. 
And this is what I'm talking about. Sometime our parents sin that has been passed down has affected your children generation. Okay, there is a list of generational curse. I have a, a whole lot, but I'm only saying some of them. Some generational curse can be physical as well as time as young age, alcohol addiction or any form of addiction, generational trauma, codependency, poverty mindset, single parent with and um, parenthood, experience prejudice, idolatry, putting money, sex, jobs, materialistic, relationship above your family and spirituality, intest, divorce, gold digging or being attracted to gold diggers, gambling, promiscuity, affair, toxic parenting habit, depression, anxiety, unforgiveness, socialization, laziness, anger, rage, issue and having a fear with more than one man having kids by different men divorce adultery belly and depths um mental illness chronic pain let me tell you sometimes the environment that the children is in the parents uh it can affect them to become generational curse as well so violence in the bloodline means that parents always fight in the chaos in the house in front of kids. Kids can inherit those behavior as an abuser or domestic violence, manipulation, control issue, many illness are genetic and therefore passed on from the parents to a child. Yes, so all of these come from generational trauma, even sexual sin as well, my friend. Anger issue, unforgiveness, bitterness, rain, violent murder, progressiveness, greed, jealousy, laziness, gambling, stealing, poverty, fear of failure, fear of man, fear of evil, fear of darkness, fear of lose, rebellion towards God and authority, stubbornness, pride, idolatry, disobedience, lawlessness, witchcraft, arrogant, controlling attitude. And Adultery, illness, uncontrolled tongue, lying. Those are lists of generational curse. And it is time to break it. How can we break generational curse? So before we break generational curse, breaking free from generational curse often involves self-awareness, healing, intentional action. There are some steps you can take. Number one, recognize pattern. Identify the negative pattern or behavior that have been passed down through generation in your family. Number two, seek understanding. Understand the root cause of these pattern. This might involve exposing family history, trauma, and belief system. Number three, therapy and counseling. Consider seek therapy or counseling. Address any emotional or trauma that may contribute to the generational curse. Number four, set boundaries. Establish a healthy boundary family member who perk to a negative behavior or belief. Number five, change your mindset. Cultivate a positive mindset. Believe in your ability to break free from cycle. Affirmation, prayer can be helpful. Number six, create new habit. Intentional develop new habit behavior that align with life you want to create for yourself and future generation. Number seven, Connect with support community, turn us a support friend, mentor, our community group who uplift and encourage your growth. Number eight, forgive and let go. Practice forgiveness towards yourself and others for past mistakes or hurt. Letting go of resentment can help break the cycle of negativity. Number nine, live your truth. Embrace the self, live according to your value rather than living in the past generational curse. Number 10, seek spiritual guidance. Yes, seek spiritual guidance from a spiritual leader. And this can be engaged in prayer, fasting, 
in your journey toward breaking generational curse. Remember, breaking free from a generational curse is a journey that takes time, patient commitment, the personal growth, and healing yourself. Second metal for break free from generational curse involve combination of spiritual practice and personal growth. So here are the steps. Acknowledge the curse. Recognize and acknowledge the existence of generational curse in your family line. This can be the first step toward breaking its power over your life. Number two, repentance. Turn away from your sinful behavior and attitude that may have contributed to the perpetration of the curse in your family line. Repentance involves genuine reform and committing to change. Repentance, have a repentant heart. Number three, seek forgiveness. Ask forgiveness from God for any sin or transgression committed by yourself or your ancestor that may open up the door to the curse. Number four, renunciation. Verbal renunciate the generational curse. Declare your intention to break free from it. Influence in your life. This can be done through prayer, scripture, or seeking support of a spiritual leader. Number five, faith in Christ. Place your trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Redeemer. He can heal you. Through faith in Christ, believer of access to the power of God to overcome any curse or bondage. Number six, prayer and fasting. Engage in prayer and fasting to seek God's guidance, wisdom, deliverance from generational curse. Fasting can help to strengthen your spirit and demonstrate your sincerity in seeking God's intervention. Number seven, fill yourself with God's words. Yes, allow God's words to renew your mind and transform your thinking. Meditate on scripture that affirm God's promise of freedom, healing, and deliverance. Number eight, work in obedience. Walk in obedience. Live a life of obedience to God's commandment and teaching. This info and include living a life of integrity, love, righteousness, which can help to break the cycle of sin and bondage in your family life. Number nine, seek deliverance. If necessary, seek deliverance ministry as well. Spiritual leader who can help you break free from spiritual stronghold and curses as well, my friend, through prayer. Number 10, trusting God. Ultimately, trusting God, faithfulness, and fulfill his promise, even in the face of generational curse. God is able to bring redemption, restoration, and freedom to those who trust in him. Declare the blood of Jesus upon your life and your family and break the curse in Jesus' name. And the, the, set, the third method to set yourself free from generational um, curse. Number one, allow the Holy Spirit to bring to your remembrance the sin, the iniquity of the parents, forefather, and confess them. Number two, personally forgive your forefather of their iniquity. Number three, ask God to forgive specific sin of your living father. Number four, confess your participation in the iniquity of your family tree. Number five, Ask God to forgive and cleanse you. Number six, submit your will to God. Number seven, remember that Jesus suffered a curse and overcame the devil for you. Number eight, understand that God has all authority. Number nine, use the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Number 10, declare the power of the, the blood of Jesus. Number 11, declare that your family generation of course are broken. Number 12, speak in blessing over your life and the life of your children. How to break generational curse over your kids. So breaking generational curse from your children, life, Involve the combination of parents, intentional parents practicing, spiritual practicing. So, number one, commit to godly parenting. Dedicate yourself to raise your children according to 
the Bible, the word of God, godly lifestyle, teach them the word of God, pray for them regularly. Number two, prayer. Pray provokingly for your children. Ask God to break any generational cord that may be affecting their life. Pray against this pattern of this dysfunction or oppression that you see in your family line. Number three, cover them in God's word. Teach your children the scripture. Encourage them to guide our high God words in their heart. Help them to understand their identity in Christ, the authority they have as a believer to resist and overcome evil. Number four, create a healthy environment for them. Cultivate a home environment that is characterized by love, peace, the spirit of the spirit. Set bones to protect your children from negative influence. Provide them with a safe, nurturing place, space to grow. Number five, model repentance and forgiveness. Be willing to admit your own mistake. Ask forgiveness when you fall short as a parent. Demonstrate the importance of repentance and forgiveness in breaking the cycle of sin and dysfunction. Number six, speak blessing over them. Speak positive affirmation, blessing over your children, declare God's promise of love, protection, provision in their life. Avoid speaking curse or negative word that reinforce generational pattern or negativity. Number seven, seek spiritual covering. Connect your family with a local church or spiritual environment where your children can receive additional support, prior covering from spiritual leader and fellows believer of Christ. Number eight, disciple them in spiritual war and it's mean that teach your children about spiritual warfare equip them with the tool they need to resist temptation overcome evil stand firm in their faith teach them to pray to put on the arm of god and rely on the power of the holy spirit to lead them in a god-fearing life number nine encourage personal relationship with god encourage your children to develop a personal relationship with god through prayer fasting worship Daily devotion, help them to cultivate a deep, intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that will sustain them through life challenge. Number 10, trust in God. Trust in God's severity, faithfulness, and protect and guide your children's life. Remember that God is able to break every chain and to bring redemption and restoration in those who trust in Jesus Christ. So, as you realize, we have lived in a age. So this can be concluded that we live in an age when paganism is exploding. Number of people who are practice witchcraft, Satanism, other mankind concept behind counting. Christian must hold firm to what the Bible say. And we must realize that the end of all these things is sure certain and will come. Revelation 1 verse 7. So if anyone is worried about being under a curse, I put under a spell, I tell them that unless God bring them to repent and they put their trust in Christ, they are under a greater curse than a human could ever produce. Eternal separation of God is worse of all generational curse to me because like the rich man and Lazarus gap between them and God is unbreakable. Today, if you are not saved and it is best for the day to confess your sin, place your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Just as hell will be the greatest curse ever, so heaven will be the greatest blessing ever. So what greater blessing than to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and fall on our face before him. For those who reject God today, they may be suffering in these days and those things. For those who believe in him today and trust in the Son of God, or Jesus Christ, who has set us free from sin or the curse of the Lord, we are set free indeed. Their suffer will be over someday and you will have eternal joy, fellowship with God, my prayer for you is for you can inherit eternal joy where there be no more sores, no more pain, no more suffering, and no more death. Let the word of God tell us what is it in store for the children of God someday in Revelation 21 verse 4. He will wipe away every tears from our eyes and there will be no more death, no more no crying or pain for the older harder of things has passed away. 
Thank you, Jesus. So put your faith in Jesus Christ and come to him today before the hymns come. So thank you for watching my video. My call to you is that anytime generational um, curse is trying to come in your family, say this is where generational curse will run out. Thank you for watching my video and we will see you through. If you need um, any prayer offer to break generational curse, I have a couple of them you, I can share it with you. Just like, comment, subscribe, put your um prayer you want down there and then i will place it there as well thank you for watching my video like comment and subscribe and i will see you in my next video